welcome to our new commissioners, which is such an exciting time when we have new people joining our group. And I see Iris is now on screen. Iris Hannon, correct? Is that how you say it? All right, we are so excited that you're with us today. That's just amazing. Um, did Angela give you any warning that we would be asking you to maybe tell us a little bit about yourself, Iris? Yeah, she did. All right. I was just getting over because I thought somehow maybe you guys had been meeting for a while and I came in it in too late. But no, I'm. This is the time you meet at six, right? Okay. <laughs> um, I'm. I'm a bit of an artist, a textile artist, and I have two daughters that are artists. And I came from a town a few years ago, Naperville, Illinois, that had a really big. Um, public art um, program as well, which I always enjoyed. I was not actually involved with it, but um, I got excited about being involved in the one out here because I have two daughters that are artists and they encouraged me to buy any art for my new home from local artists. And so I just kind of, I'm really into the movement and really happy to be on board. So. Oh, that's so exciting. We're so glad to have you. Thank you. Um, hopefully the next time we meet, we'll take some time and we'll go kind of round robin and you can meet all the commissioners. We have some that are missing for this week. So maybe it'd be best to do that next month. Okay. So, but we're super glad to have you. How long have you been in Longmont? I moved here in 2018. So right before. All right. <laughs> I was here. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah, well, we're glad you're here and thanks Thank for joining you. us. Thank you. Um, we also have another new commissioner. Her name is Stephanie Burris. And it doesn't look like Stephanie got on the call today. So hopefully next month we'll be able to introduce her as well. So thanks and welcome. Um, we, with our last set of commission or new commissioners that came on board, we actually started kind of a new process where we had developed a little bit of a mentorship where we attached a, a seasoned commissioner with the new onboard commissioner, coming on board commissioner. Um, and that one of those folks last time around was Danielle. She was our one of our newest folks. And so we were wondering if Danielle would give us potentially a little bit of feedback from how that mentorship went the last time around when she came on board. If you're comfortable, Danielle, if not, we can talk outside of this. No, that's totally fine. Um, I think that with being COVID, it was really tough because unfortunately Randy and I never really were able to meet up. And it's kind of, I feel like I've been in this like little moment of limbo, which of course is changing now that we're able to actually be able to meet up but I can see it being incredibly beneficial. Um, it's a lot. It's definitely like I, I've never been a part of a commission before. So I, it's been a huge learning curve. And I'm definitely glad to know that if I do have any questions, I can reach out to Randy. And I still feel like like through the year, I will utilize that. And especially as we get more involved and more out a little bit more. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for that feedback. Yeah. Angela and I had kind of talked about this. And we decided that we would trial it that last time around and hopefully as we go forward, we can help to put a little bit more structure to the mentoring program. And so this time around, we thought that it might be best for some of our executive team members to actually take on that mentorship role so that we can kind of de develop some sort of a nice tool that we make sure that every new commissioner that comes on board actually gets a pretty standard set of information that will help them to um, kind of meld quickly into the group as well as feel comfortable and get the information that they need initially so that they're successful going forward. So with that said, um, out of the, the executive team that's here, is there anyone that would like to come alongside myself and Angela and help to create a more formal mentoring program? Randy? Okay. All right. Aaron, too. That sounds great. So with that said, um, Iris, we will get you a mentor, but we, give us a little bit of time to decide the best way to process through that. And by next meeting, we'll have somebody assigned to you so that you can kind of integrate quickly into our group. So once again, we're really happy that you're here. So 
Yeah. All right. So Angela, number eight has to do with our live in-person meetings. You want to talk about that? <laughs> yeah. So uh, poor, poor Iris got the best of me today. I just, I, I think that I'm just like super jazzed and I, I had two pots of coffee and she got, she got all two pots, but uh, as of three forty one, I think yesterday, uh, our wonderful city manager officially declared a no longer emergency situation. Um, formally, Boulder County is at two point two percent infection rate, and so while of course they uh, the city has invited uh, boards and commissions to open up a little. Um, a little more after city council met the first time. Uh, I just wanted to make sure to throw that out there because I think that that's a pretty uh, um, significant statement uh, as we consider as a group to me. Um, the only thing that I would say that has come from the city clerk's office is, uh, and, and I can say in a test myself, um, the hybrid option, uh, if, if we can avoid <laughs> hybrid option um, until at least a policy procedure or, or someone has actually investigated that opportunity um, <laughs> and, and has executed it effectively. Uh, it is absolutely my preference to kind of choose one route and stick with that route. So either meeting in person, masked, socially distant, you know, figuring out what that looks like, what the conditions are to meet in person, or um, depending upon the commission's feeling, to stick with virtual. So I'm actually going to turn it over to Cindy because um, she and I were talking about this when we volunteered our time on Saturday. Um, we discussed it and sh she actually has a really good approach um, because I think that as people talk about their vaccinations um, or not, um, you know, it's, it's, a per it's a kind of a personal thing. I am vaccinated um, and I'm excited to be say that on behalf of myself, but I know that that's not the way that everyone feels. So Cindy, do you want to give us your brilliant, brilliant idea? Not my brilliant idea, but it is a brilliant idea. My, I have another group that's been meeting by Zoom, and we met for the first time on Saturday in person. And the president of that group sent out a thing that said, because people have a different level of comfort in enclosed spaces, I'd like to propose a color-coded comfort check There will for the AIPP when we meet hopefully next month, there will be colored dots by the door to indicate your comfort level. If you're not fully vaccinated two weeks from your second shot, please also wear a mask. If you put on a green dot, that lets everybody know you're fully vaccinated and feel free to give me a hug or a handshake or whatever. If you have a yellow dot, you're fully vaccinated, but don't hug me. I don't really want to have personal contact with people. And if you have a red dot, you're just uncomfortable with close contact or not fully vaccinated. And you don't have to say either way, but you have the green, yellow, red, like a stoplight to let people know how comfortable you are with personal contact. How does that sound to people? I think it's a super idea. And just to clarify, um, you do not, uh, to attend a meeting, you do not have to uh, state whether you are or are not vaccinated. Just, just so you know, to participate in a, in a meeting um, that is not required, but using that scale and also recognizing that to meet, we have to, of course, abide by state and city um, laws and recommendations. So, um, so the green, yellow, red uh, really is more about your comfort level um, and, and not an indicator directly if you are or are not vaccinated, but again, it's a choice thing, right? Okay. So Angela, a quick question. Would we be meeting, meeting in the auditorium as opposed to our room upstairs that's really small? Or we will be meeting in a room. It won't be the auditorium. It will likely be Kaiser AB. Uh, okay. So and I'm again thinking um, longer, right? Further out. Uh, Thursday nights, coincidentally, is concert night at the museum. Mm -hmm. And so uh, there will be concerts happening in the auditorium and the other uh, meeting room is used as the green room. So we'll be 
in that uh, other room, but yes, spread out. Yes. You know, we will be able to, to. Yeah. So the cut. So a classroom basically. And it's, and it is bigger than the, um, is bigger than that conference room. Cause that's not going to work. Yeah. So that's where we held the workshop this mm -hmm. couple of weeks ago. Right. Yeah. So yeah, for folks that haven't been in that room, it's a, it's a really a pretty large room. Um, and so it, it would not be difficult for us to be all well spaced out if, if we felt like we needed to be. So do we want to, do you have anybody else have any other questions or comments about us meeting either way? I would just say Pam's in the waiting room. So oh, okay. let's admit her before we go further into the conversation. All right. A quick second. And also maybe while we wait for her to come in, um, again, the meetings have to be open. So we just need to be mindful that it, while 99.9% .9 of the time, it does just, um, you know, it, it ends up being the 15 of us, Marsha, a couple staff people. So a little less than 20, uh, because it's an open meeting, we of course have to be accommodating to anyone who we want to join us. Right. So, um, right. so just in thinking about capacity and, and your comfort level, there is, there is that, right. Okay, good point. Hey, Pam, can you hear us? We can't hear you, Pam, if you're there. Chances are she's going to have to call in because she's a she's a two part Zoom situation. She it looks like she's got both windows up though already. Okay. Um. Oh yeah. Hey, Pam. Yes. You're there. Okay. Welcome. Yes, I we're am. Glad, we're glad we can't see you though today. I don't know why. Uh -huh. Okay. We can hear you though. Okay, that's good. <laughs> we're in the middle of a discussion about the potential. Oh, there you are. We can see you. We're oh, okay. in the middle. We're talking about the potential of meeting in person for our meeting that's coming up um, August 19th. And yes. so we're just kind of discussing whether we as a group are going to either continue to do virtual or we're going to go ahead and meet in person. Um, anybody else have any comments regarding our next meeting being in person? Go ahead, Noah. Uh, I just want to say that I'm for it. It'll be nice. Me too. Okay. After the class, I really enjoyed seeing people. Yeah, so. me too. So do we need to make a motion and vote on whether we're going to meet in person next month? I think we should, uh, because I understand if for some reason we did go virtual, we have to, now that the emergency declaration is over, there's some legal beagle we have to do. Um, to continue meeting virtually. So I think just for the record's sake, I think it's helpful. Okay. I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion that our next meeting in August will be in person and uh, that we should adopt the yellow, the green, yellow, red uh, guideline uh, for people who, who would like to do that. Okay, do we have a second? I second. Motion. Okay. All in favor, say hand raise. All in favor. All, anybody opposed? Okay. So okay. looks like we're going to meet in person next month, August 19th. Yes, that's going to be exciting. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that. I look forward to it. And as we were talking before the meeting started, hopefully things aren't gonna change in terms of what happens with COVID over the next couple of weeks and we'll get to meet in person for a couple of months, we're hoping. So, okay, is it time to move to number nine, which is Creative Culture AIPP Workshop Debrief. Workshop debrief. Ah, so I was, 
totally amazed to have sat through that workshop um, a couple of weeks ago with Brian Corrigan. And I know a lot of you had the opportunity to sit through it too. So we thought we'd just take some time to kind of do a debrief, talk about what we think went really well, um, some ideas that you were excited about or things that you think we could do differently if we were to meet again. So we'll go ahead and open up the kind of the floor to your ideas or your input or any feedback. I thoroughly enjoyed it and really appreciated getting to interact with everybody again. And um, it, it was definitely worthwhile my time for sure. Yeah, agreed. Uh, I, I'm embarrassed to say that, uh, well, first of all, we had a great time and I loved it. And I can't remember what we came up with because I actually did not keep the piece of paper we were scribbling on. Um, the gal that, that was in my group, Susan, and I don't know her last name, worked for the city and she was supposed to get in contact with me and then we were gonna move ahead toward something. And I don't know, ah, but it was, it was a very creative process that that is really the truth. The, the facilitator um, was was uh, great, and he and he did instill um, a feeling of creativity in the room. I, I think all of us uh, felt that. So I think I think it was it was well worth the time spent. Yeah. And also the uh, biscuits and gravy were really good. I like that a lot. Oh yeah, great food. Yeah, no, the I agree. the The whole thing was really fun. It did get like the creative juices flowing, um, but it is kind of hard to to pick up where we left off. So if there was the only thing I guess I would recommend is as a last step where like we make a plan of how we're going to take those ideas and put them into action before we even leave that kind of a scenario. I think it would be great for the participants, those of us who were there, just to get together again um, to outline what it is we want to present and, and follow through on. I think that would be time well spent also. I'd like to do that. Randy, I think you were going to say something. Oh, yeah. So what I gathered, the positive thing I gathered was, um, I guess, building relationships and meeting people. I attended the uh, closing ceremony for the museum um, ex exhibit of the Impressionists. And uh, Justin, one of the museum guys, was there, and he's like, don't I know you? I'm like, yeah. And he's like, oh yeah. So that was really cool. And we, I got the card of the city of Longmont communications person. So just, and I met Steve Riceweiler. So just putting faces to names and now they know who we are and we know who they are. So that just helps a lot when you're working with people in different groups, you know, but um, Laurel, I totally agree with you. I think that's a great idea, maybe to uh, enact a task force, but just a quick one to get together and figure out what we did learn and how we can apply it going forward. Yeah, that would be great. I, and the sooner I think, the sooner yeah, before we forget it. <laughs> uh huh. Maybe next yeah. week sometime, a lunch or uh, and. Uh, Whatever, whatever, I'm totally flexible. I don't care what time it is. Yeah. Yep. Danielle, did you have any feedback you wanted to give on the presentation? You were there. I, no, I wasn't there. Oh, you weren't there? Oh, I thought you were. I wish oh, I sorry. I'm sorry. It's okay. All right. <laughs> okay. 
So Angela, what are our next steps? So interestingly, um, the the initiative and the and the and the goal from for the uh, the workshop was really met, which was to start thinking about a project in an opposite way, which is where the creativity aspect comes first, and then to get our city partners uh, to th start thinking that way too. Um, and then knowing that we have this opportunity in September to bring it together. And so we had just a little quantification so you can wrap your brain around this. Um, we had nine city staff people, not including myself. We had representation from communications, the web um, and social media person for the city. Uh, we had someone who is working deeply in equity and works for sustainability and resilience. We had Steve Ransweiler, who is our friend from Parks. And we also, I'm missing somebody, uh, communications, who am I I'm missing? Some, oh, and Aaron Fosdick, uh, who is a principal developer. So really we took a spectrum, a representative of, of a wide spectrum from the city and brought them around the table to talk about um, the, the thing that, clicked with me was that the, you know, Forbes 500 um, t CEOs, one of the top three uh, characteristics they want in leaders of the future are creative people, right? So, so we're just trying to like um, recognize that the standard way of going about art in public places, of course, is valuable and will always be there. And there's also these opportunities of storytelling in unique and fun ways that is really very interactive and participatory, but also solves problems. Um, so we did realize at the end that um, what was a half day workshop really needed to be a full day workshop. It was an introduction to creative placemaking for most people in the room. Um, I didn't anticipate that. I thought we would kind of be about a half and half. And really this was the um, an introduction for most folks. So the next step is that, um, Brian has has offered for included in in our uh, our fee for this um, professional development to do a second session, uh, and so in August. So we have two options. Uh, we can do the second session as its own independent individual date that we can come up with, or we can utilize our August um, meeting time on the nineteenth for the second session with the goal to have most people participate. And also knowing that you didn't need to really go to part one, we'll give you resources to investigate and then be able still to actively participate in part two. So that's kind of the where we are. Um, and then again, the goal coming out of this is to come up with a project that we will fund and execute that's participatory for the 150th year of, of kind of celebrating Longmont that's executed at the Art Walk on September 11th. So, or we don't have to, of course, and we can kind of build on independently what we've learned and go, like you say, um, do a task force and, and take the ideas that were generated and just come up with something that way. So, yep, that's it. So it sounds like with the feedback we've received from the folks that attended that it might be good to go ahead and do a second session. Is there a preference of whether we do one outside of the meeting or whether we do it during the next commission meeting? Um, I think it would be great to do it at the next commission meeting because this is really a, a lead in to determining what we're going to do if we're going to do anything major going forward for that September 11th date. So I think it would be great if we could all participate in this second session, knowing that even if you didn't attend the first, you'll be fine and we'll be able to catch you up to speed with how we develop through this next session. Anybody else have ideas about how you'd like to proceed? I think um, to have that development as part of a two hour uh, commissioner meeting like this 
it's going to be very difficult I, I, unless we don't conduct any business and just use that two hours for the catch up for for the other people that way because that's at least how long he would need i would think two hours i would agree it seems like we might be overtaxing ourselves and just the length of that meeting um would be a bit much um so i would recommend breaking it up into two separate events yeah, yeah I agree. or a separate session completely mm -hmm. and the way the way we should start out next time is give us the structure first of what we're doing like he had some sheets there of identify the problem you know there was some definite um milestones that that we that's why we were there and that's what we need to know in order to uh put forth a successful project so really going over those steps first and then jumping into maybe solving a problem yeah would it be helpful if the facilitator and myself uh, took, uh, and some of the things that Holly and Brian and I spoke about was took, if you will, the bones of some of the conversations because there were threads through everything, the project that everyone had kind of come up with, there's a thread through all of them. So if we broke those potentials into a, a, a skeleton, on large post-its and then actually spend the second part putting the constructing onto that skeleton um, was one of the ideas for the second session. Is the goal to come up with a project and do it? Okay, based on all the ideas that we had? Yep, that's asset, that's asset driven, that there's yeah. a piece of, of um, public art that comes out of it, that is a com is the voice of the community. And so, I think to your point, correct. We need to understand what those, what the different projects were. And yes, they were all tied in some way. But what were they? And then we can vote on which one we want to proceed with. Okay. And use a lot of post-it notes. <laughs> know how I am about office supplies. Love me some post -it. I love office supplies. Okay. Um, Holly and I, I think we'll chat about this and get some dates. Right now, as y'all know, the Saturdays are like fully loaded. Um, every single Saturday through July is shock art business. And um, so maybe... How, how did uh, Saturday work for everyone in the morning or is an evening during the week more preferable, more preferable, preferable, just preferable? Saturday morning works for me. Either one works for me, so I'm, I'm happy to do either one. Um, I'm more likely to be able to attend things on a Saturday, especially if it's in the morning or early afternoon yeah with biscuits and gravy and egg and fruit <laughs> free food is one of my favorite things free food yeah so angela i i'm not sure how um, how long of a session <clears throat> brian has committed to for us um and but i'm thinking even if we looked at the the next meeting and didn't have our our typical um, communication about all of our projects and just kind of put that meeting aside just to do some workshop too, or you know, however you'd wanna look at that. I'm wondering if that would fit more into what his plan was in terms of how he agreed to proceed with us with this. Um, so because we spent most of our workshop in the beginning session, the beginning points of kind of connecting the dots of, of strategies and some other projects that have happened in the realm of creative placemaking, we ended up not having as much time as was initially allotted for that second portion, which is the important portion, right? And so at that aha moment, it was like, okay, we really need to 
to get all the way through the second portion. So I do think it's another um, like a two hour with a with a little bit of a break, right? Um, so it'll still be broken into two pieces, but maybe one with more direction and like what that skeleton is. And like Randy said, kind of coming about the, this is the direction we want to go. And then the second part is really constructing that. And um, yeah. Hmm. And again, so, an open meeting. So as long as we have quorum um, and in participants of the commission, um, then of course, if we want to vote on something that that can happen, it can be a special session, it's no problem, right? Okay. Okay. So with that said, is it is it still the, the general feeling that we want to, to do a Saturday session or would we consider doing our next meeting on August 19th and not having the normal business that we would do during a meeting and just devoting that time to um, workshop to or the further development of these plans? Anybody have any suggestions or ideas? Agree, disagree. I, As, think, yeah, I mean, it sounds like from Angela that that Brian is is committed to maybe two more hours, Angela. So at this point, it might be harder to do a four hour session because he's or we may have to look at re renegotiating. No, okay. I don't. I think we're. I think um, the, the we will accomplish the goal. And he is committed to getting us there. Okay. Um, yeah, I think whatever works for the for the um, the majority is the way we should go. So if Saturday morning is it, then Saturday morning is it. Yeah. Okay. So is it best that I just send out? I'll send out a, a doodle poll with dates. I will also include our regularly scheduled Thursday night as a par portion of that because there are people who. Um, will potentially want to join us. I can say that I'm not 100% sure that um, our staff folks um, would participate again, but I do know after speaking with them at length that it's great. We kind of uh, have put the, the bee in their bonnet, right? And they have gone back to their, their different pods within the city. And so there's definitely a, you know, there's a buzz and they're looking forward to what this is and what it'll look like. So, um, okay, that's what I'll do, unless any objections. I think that's a great move forward. Okay, sounds good. All right, so it looks like we're at number 10, which is public art project updates. And it looks like shock art is first on the agenda. Um, City, Cindy and Randy, looks like you guys may have some input into shock art. Cindy, you're on mute. <laughs> we're voting. We're voting downtown and we're voting online and we're busy tallying votes. I'm busy tallying votes. I put it on my Facebook page. The, um, the ballot box at the Old Town Marketplace um, was full in two days, three days. Absolutely wow. packed full. So that's good. That's a good turnout. Very good. Are we going to be able to get a sandwich board to put out front? Cool. Not going to be here by Saturday, though. And um, people that I talked to, actually, the sidewalk chalk worked pretty well. It rained, of course, so I'm going to have to redo that. Um, but that's okay. So next Saturday, I'll get out there earlier and do my sidewalk chalk business. But um, yes, sandwich board will be much better. So, yeah. All and right. Cindy is being modest. I mean, Cindy did come and help me. Um, photograph all the boxes because one of the some of the feedback that we had last year was that the photographs were different so the scales of the model would be varied and it's because I took pictures just kind of as they came in rather than just setting up a station and doing them all at once so uh Cindy and I problem solved that which thank you very much and then the setup piece of it um Danielle 
<laughs> and I spent an exciting morning uh, with table delivery and chatting people up at Old Town Marketplace to kind of give them talking points on um, what to say and kind of what we are doing and executing. So when we're not there, um, that they can speak about it. And our ballots are, of course, bilingual front and back. So uh, anyone can participate that way. And some of the signage needs a little bit of updating. But thus far, the feedback has been has been great. So and I don't know how many online votes we have yet. I should have looked today, but. Um, Is there a link to the online voting? Mm -hmm. Can you send that to me so I can, I don't, I mean, you probably did, but I don't know where it's okay. Yep. Also, one year we had a very, very, very large piece of paper that had the map of Longmont and where the boxes are located. That'd be cool. Yep. And. Are we doing a, like a finale voting? 24th. That's what I thought. Okay. So there's this upcoming Saturday, the 17th, which uh, a couple of folks have signed up for. Thank you very much. And then uh, the 24th, which is our kind of finale for voting. Um, and then in the meantime, the shock art subcommittee will get together and decide which boxes you want. Kevin just got back to me with a good list. Um, so you'll be hearing from me. Um, map I can do, that was on my list. And I actually, I think I can get that done by Saturday. So that'll be good. Um, and then people could encircle if they ha have one that they would like to see. Uh, but here's the other piece is that uh, we have 35 entries as, as Cindy had said earlier, uh, it seems like almost every single box is getting a vote at least. Um, so how many boxes are y'all interested in having painted? In the past, it's been an average of five to seven, but you're not limited um, to how many boxes. So if you wanted to even do an upwards of 10 or nine and a commissioner's choice, it's completely up to you. Um, I like the idea of nine and a commissioner's choice. That would be nice. Especially since we have such a good turnout and some, and some really nice ones, so. I agree with that 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 will uh, be a commit uh, uh, I'm sorry a commitment of twenty thousand dollars for this year plus the cost that comes out of supplies for the priming and um, that's completely budgeted for every every year so um, yep you want to make that official by all means um, I will I'm, I vote to um expand the uh, number of uh, shock art pieces to nine with a commissioner's choice. And um, is that good? Is that all I need to say? Okay. Everyone in favor? Anybody opposed? All right, looks like that's it. It's such a popular program. and. I love it anyway. I, I love seeing those boxes and being surprised. So, yeah. The other thing I would like to ask is um, one of the questions that has come up is, uh, can, can I have a map? Can I have a map of where all the shock art boxes are? And unfortunately, the, the map that was done before I arrived, I can't find that digital um, file anywhere. It needs to be redone because, of course, you'll remember End of 2019, Kevin had to de a session three, I believe, because they were out of warranty or something happened. Anyways, um, so redoing that map, redoing the images of where where they are, and then we'll also turn it into a digital asset so it can go on the website. So you actually don't have to print it out or come and get a physical copy. Is the commission agreeable to yeah. seeing, um, printing? budget on that this year? Great and idea. Design. I will uh, start pricing that out and let you know. Okay. 
So Angela, are we sure that there was a blanket email that went out for shock art? Do we know that kind of a blanket email saying yeah, for, open? for voting for online voting, or did we not do that this year at all? No, we have not. And it's because there were some hiccups in the digital uh, platform. Okay. I, it has anybody completed it all the way through. I have, and I found the hiccup and, but <laughs> it locks you out once you vote with your IP address. Um, oh. But now it's um, it's good. So I think that we can um, so, and we can get it out before Saturday for for the next in um, online voting. But it is live on Facebook and our okay. website is updated. So um, good. Okay. So email will go out. Okay. Angela. Yes. I previously volunteered to take shock art pictures for to put into this new map, but I don't know where, I mean, I can wander around and take pictures of everything I see, but it would be more efficient if I knew where they were and could just go down the streets. Is there? So, so I have, I have a limited number of the maps and I'm just going to scan it. It'll be, it'll be ugly. Um, but that's the same thing that I did for the table in. Right. Well, the question is though, uh, are there new ones since that came out? Cause I can't get to it through my screen, but I think I might have one of those. One of those, what are they? 2019 ones. They are 2019 and yes. So the ones that will are be- you, Are you actually going to be at the Old Town Marketplace on Saturday? Okay, why don't we talk about that then? Cause I'll bring my map and we can mark it up. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for volunteering, Cindy, to take those pictures. Yeah, I got That's nothing great. better to Thank do with you. my life. Oh, yeah. oh, we appreciate your time. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. All right. Anything else on chalk art? Um, just that the next two Saturdays, so the 17th and the 24th, put it on your calendar. I will resend the volunteer sign up. If there's not any spots and you're like, I still want to come, please come. Cause that would be, I probably won't stay all the way to the end so I can, um, or I might have one of my mini partners in crime, the 11 year old or the eight year old with it's so fun. So we'll see how that goes. Um, and then hold on a sec. What exactly is the time that you are going to be there? On July 17th and July 24th. Sure. So there's two shifts. One of them is uh, setting up and getting kind of uh, making sure there's ballots out. And that starts at four. And that, so it's two hour shifts, four to six or six to eight. Um, and there's empanadas. Um, and really, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, Randy, Cindy, uh, really, it's just engaging people. People do not read the signs. They're like, what is this? Even though there's a sign with a box and like, we're going to paint this and they just don't read. So, and then just encouraging them to vote and um, letting them know that their voice counts in the community and let them, you know, know what art in public places is. And once we have the map, then they can, you know, if you, one of these boxes is near your school and you want to see it, circle it as one of the ones we want painted, right? One thing that I came across and I've come across this in the past is when you say the word vote, sometimes you get a reaction like, you know, because of all the stuff that's happened in the past with our elections. So you can think of some other creative ways to approach people like, um, do you like art or? Mm -hmm. You want your voice heard and selecting, you know, just the word vote or election is not, sometimes not so good. We I, tabletops to like choose. Sorry, Noah, go ahead. Uh, I would push back against that because <clears throat> we should make voting and civic engagement um, every day like talking points that should be something we're all excited to do and we can use this as a way to 
rejigger people's thinking about what it means to vote and mm -hmm. to express your opinion via That's a good idea. cards in boxes. Um, speaking of, as we're having this chat, I'm checking out the Survey Monkey thing. And it's uh, this page is a little bland and kind of like the boxes are a little hard to see. And also choosing your favorite five out of just kind of a almost endless list is a bit daunting. Um, I might suggest next time, I don't know, I've never tried to use Survey Monkey, so I don't know how uh, malleable it is, but if we could get bigger pictures and use a rank choice system, so you could just be like, oh, these are my favorite in this order. Uh, instead of just like, I like this one and this one and this one, because the way that it's lined up, all the ones at the top of the page are gonna get those first votes. And then by the time you get to the bottom, oh, I already used up my five, I can't vote for these now. True, but uh, it's in random order, no matter- Really? Well, that's great. And if you go and you click on the title or hover, it should say enlarge and it's going to fill up most of your screen and you'll see all sides. So, and I'm going to tell you the reasoning behind this. The reasoning is that in the past, prior to my arrival, um, and Teresa, you might be able to speak about this, but um, the ballot stuffing conundrum uh, was, and oh, Randy, you were there too, right? Um, it's, uh, it's highly contentious. Uh, it's a very competitive situation and I've had lots of conversations with artists. And so when we designed how to be able to do this online, because our reach gets further into the community, right? Um, people are publicizing for us, right? Um, and because there's five, you get five votes, even if an artist says, hey, mine is the rock box, make sure you vote for me, they're also going to vote for four other ones that aren't their best friend, right? So the popular vote is going to rise to the top inevitably. Um, and then the randomness is that someone online can't say, hey, vote for mine, it's number five. You know, they act, they have to say, mine's Dogmont, it looks like this, It you know. Um, and then the other piece of it is, a. Uh, um, the, the survey monkey, the, the, form, the platform we're using has the ability to recognize false email addresses. Mm -hmm. So has the ability to weigh, um, weigh the votes based on people who live in the area versus mm. people who might live somewhere else because they're just your Facebook friend. So while I can't speak to the visible nature of it, that it's this whole long, yeah, you kind of got to go through list. There's a lot of reasons that we did it that way, but we'll see what our turnout is. We'll see how, how many times somebody tries to trick me this year. <laughs> and, um, Cause I caught them last year. It was, it actually was really easy. Um, and, uh, and I will ask our communications department who designed this for me. Um, if we can make it more visually attractive. Does that solve, does that at least answer the questions and concerns? It doesn't fix it, but. Yeah, no, that is, um, the, the page as it is, is kind of bland, um, but you're right. It is easy to zoom in and on, look at the ones that you like them more. It's almost, it would almost be better if it was a grid mm -hmm. and then they shuffled. <laughs> Do what I can do. Okay, cool. Okay. So remember when you when you get the next opportunity to go in there and sign up for some of those other Saturday shifts so that we can um, get some successful days going and get shock art behind us and then work in through summer on the streets as well. Um, yeah, so next on the list looks like our basketball mural partnership. Nope, sorry, did I miss something? Looks like Angela's. And for National Night Out. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna say real quick, I will resend the volunteer link as well, just so everybody can look at it. Um, okay, so 
after the 24th, the next Saturday is July 31st. And so Carmen Ramirez, who is uh, one of our, our most beloved uh, staff member who's really deep in our community and knows everyone, um, and her team with community services is, is hosting um, a very intentional night out on Saturday the 31st from 4 to 7 p.m. and has asked that art and public places come and be representative um, as well as the museum. And so uh, our museum education staff right now is totally tapped. They're in the midst of um, a very successful uh, summer camp season and they're working a lot. So I said, you know what, don't you worry, we'll be there. So I met with Carmen and uh, Susan Horowitz, who's not here today, she had an idea of an outreach engagement opportunity. And after presenting it to Carmen, she said, you know, I think that that might be better suited for something else. What we would like is just kind of craft that people can either do and take with them or something they can leave behind, like creating a, a something in situ and also um, information about our services to the community. So two ideas then surfaced out of that. One, of course, is bringing um, education, all the materials related to scholarships and discovery days that happens at the museum, and the education department will give us talking points. The other idea is by that point, we will have results of the shock art boxes. And so we will, I'll have to send an email out for the commissioner's choice, but y'all are just gonna have to vote online. Um, and then we take the finalists and we take those models to the park. I'm sorry, this is at Lanyon Park on East 21st and one block east of Kimbark. What is that? My brain's not working. Henry? Is it Henry? Kimbark? So, uh, yeah, Henry. yeah, yeah. So it's that, it's um, at Lanyon Park. And so so our idea is to take the shock art boxes and identify a box that's very close to Lanyon Park and say, okay, community, we're art in public places. This is one of the programs we do. We're gonna paint that box. Which one do you want? And just allow them to choose. And, and the idea of course is to have participants who are within the community, connect them directly to art in public places of what we're already doing. And then it's also a demonstration of how they can participate and if they get excited about it, then we say, yeah, and you could serve on this board and you can be a part of a selection panel. So it's almost a direct synapse, a direct connection there. Uh, Carmen assured me that there will be folks there who uh, are bilingual and will be able to assist us in, in communicating. She said that most of the folks in the neighborhood uh, are multifamily um, households. There are a lot of children that are very fluent in English and Spanish, and they will often bring their their um, caretakers, moms, dads, and grandparents. Uh, they will have a mobile vaccine clinic uh, on site. The police officers are gonna bring cool cars and the fire department's gonna bring big trucks. And we're just, uh, there's, a, there's gonna be a lot going on. And I'm just thrilled that they invited us and thought about us and um, in a bigger way. So, I just said yes, because I figure, let's do it. We're all out. So I'll be sending that sign up genius for volunteers. I'm going to add the 31st. And if anybody has ideas about a craft, I've got a couple in my head. Um, and if you want to help me and maybe we make a, a, a task force to execute this one. I know Susan Horowitz is on board. So Angela, are we doing both um, some sort of a craft and offering the opportunity with the shock art box for folks to help to decide in their community where the art's gonna go? Okay, all right. I, that's such a, I mean, I think that's ultimately what we as AIPP are um, attempting to do to go out into a community and give a group of people the ability to help decide what it is from a creative perspective that's gonna be in their neighborhood. So that to me is extremely exciting. Um, I, I think it might be a lot though to do 
some sort of a craft, unless it's some maybe, maybe for a certain age group of people, like, is it going to be a craft for kids or, so I, I think, yeah, that might be a good way to look at it. So this would be an opportunity to um, have people eight and under be creative by making something. And then everyone over eight would get the opportunity to help decide what art is going to be next created in their neighborhood. So cool. Yeah. The idea for art crafty projects was really the painting rocks and then writing the little message. And we could get a bunch of river rocks that are nice and flat and actually have them make two, one that they leave behind and one that they take with them. Uh, so that was an idea. Uh, also those, um, uh, tiles, who was there? Cindy, Francis. The first time we did uh, Art Walk 2019 in September, we did the alcohol ink tiles where you take a Sharpie and you just make random scribbles on a tile and then you drip uh, rubbing alcohol on top and it kind of tie dyes and then you dry it and then you spray it. So they get to take like a little coaster home um, it's no brainer, right? Like it's just about color and fun and it doesn't require a lot of directions. Um, so those are the ideas that as of this point. So I think to move forward, just if anybody is interested in joining Susan and I in figuring out um, the logistic part of it, and then I can send volunteer business out. I think that's the best way forward. That's my neighborhood. I love to be a part of that. Can you take sat a Saturday night off, Danielle? Um, what Saturday is that? The 31st. Oh, it's the 31st. Dang it. I know, uh, right? Uh, I had a feeling because I saw that come up in uh, on my door the other day. And I was like, and Ooh. it says that I had a huge event at work that day. Um, but let me look at what time that is. But I would love to be able to help even if I can't be there. Okay. It's four to seven, so... Okay. Yeah. Unfortunately, our event ends at five. I don't, I don't know if we can make it, but um, yeah, I'd still love to be able to part, be a part of that if I can be. And you got the door hanger. So they've already gone around. Yeah. The door hangers have gone around. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I saw that the other day. <laughs> cool. That's amazing. So you're going to send out another link for people to sign up to help for that. Right, Angela? Yeah, I'll just stick it all in the same link and just add a day, right? So you don't have to worry about managing multiple. Um, all of the volunteer opportunities will be in that. Okay. So do we need to create a small group of people to help you decide what, what art project we're going to do or how do we want to proceed with that? Well, Susan said that she would help me and Danielle, okay. the way that you can work with me that isn't on that date. I'll send you some links of, of some ideas and we'll, we'll come All right. up. Right. Cool. Perfect. Thank Sounds you. Sounds good. Yay. Okay. Now on to the basketball mural that we've been talking about for a couple of meetings now. Um, yeah. So Let's see. So it is official as of uh, the 29th of June, which was council's first time meeting in person. Uh, that they did approve the na um, neighborhood improvement projects. And Polly Christensen said some really nice things about Wayne and who was at our um, workshop, right? Uh, that that grant process has been going on for some time. And the goal here is that if we can work with Wayne to come up, if you will, with canned, I hate that word, but it's true, almost a canned project that can be an art and public places project that is uh, jointly facilitated through an already successful grant program, we're gonna reach more neighborhoods quicker, faster, and get these things that people in their communities really want to see. So this is gonna be kind of our pilot. Uh, Timber, who is the super uh, supervisor for the parks department is on board uh, with helping us figure out all of the materials. So. Um, commitment from art and public places is going to be, of course, maintenance in perpetuity, as well as the sealant. Um, and we already talked about cost on that, so we're set to go. The grant did cover all of the materials uh, and the artist fee, which is fantastic. And of course, the community uh, has to participate uh, by, you know, some sweat labor in there to offset the cost of the grant. So it really is 
it's exactly what we're talking about of getting the, the, the community involved. Art and Public Places responsibility will be facilitating the um, artist selection process. And we'll have to work with the Kitely neighborhood in, in drafting what that selection sounds like. Um, and of course, working with Timber so that the final design that comes out is conducive to having like the basketball lines, right? Because it's a basketball court. So if we want to get a task force together to help me with that one, two is two is ideal. Um, but if now since we're meeting back in person, um, it might be easier to have some of these quick task force meetings in you know in person. So let me know what you think. And again, Kitely neighborhood. Anybody have interest in that task force right off the bat? I'm super stoked on this one. I'd love to be a part of it too. Yeah, that's right by me also. I could do that. Yeah, right. I, I'm really interested in all things murals. So I would throw my head into that as well. All right. And um, I would, uh, I'm also interested to understand the process of like applying for this or like requesting it or however that would work. Um, because there's a basketball court at the end of our block and um, I feel like it could use some TLC and there's a lot of kids around here that would really appreciate it. You got it. So yes, that is exactly it, right? Is, is identifying some of the infrastructure needs that happen in the city, um, going to timber and parks and saying, hey, look, this basketball needs resurfaced as well. Um, that is, that's exactly what we're doing. So uh, let's get to the bottom of this. So, all right, I'll send out a meeting notice and ask for times. Thank you. Very excited about this, by the way. Yeah. It's a good collaboration in the city, right? Cool. All right. So maintenance, now we're at maintenance bronze updates. So yesterday, our conservator who uh, has been with the city and has done this work for our collection for some time went and did all of the treatments on our bronze collection. Uh, you'll recall that we approved the uh, dollar amount for the 10 that were already on the list. And then we added an additional three. Uh, the average cost was the same. And so the total for the maintenance was $3,060, which was within our perfectly within our budget. So that's great because the emails went out to your priority list from last month um, to see about some of the big stuff that we have to start taking care of. So we know that um, from our $20,000 budget for maintenance, um, what we have left and if, you know, it's just going to depend on what comes back with, with the, some of that other work. So if you're at Golden Ponds, uh, the frog got his first wax treatment. So I have not gone out and seen it, but this just happened yesterday. Uh, Manilda and all of her accoutrement, all of her stuff. Um, also, got uh, treated and then sunset, which is the Eagle near the swimming pool also got its first treatment. So um, yeah, if, if bronze is in your neighborhood, if you're downtown near the library and you're going to go and to the library on the 19th, when it opens, um, stop by and, and check it out. So. Well, some before and after pictures would be really cool. I didn't think about some before though, but we probably so, have some recent pictures. So yeah, and, and that's a part of the conservator's report. That's his job. He he contracts oh, nice. to document the work before and after. And the, the big part of that is because depending upon the treatment that you give a bronze, it can change the patina. Um, if a bronze lasts, you know, goes years without being treated, it starts to, you know, to turn that green, <laughs> the natural patina, AKA green sculpture. Um, yeah. So that's a part of, that's a part of his service. So yeah, it'll be fun to look at that. It might be fun to see some of those pictures. Yeah. Maybe if you have them for next meeting, maybe we can look at some of those. That'd be great. Absolutely. So. Yeah. The, the process cool. he just finished yesterday. So, um, yep. It should be soon. Definitely next meeting. So, and that right. is what I have. 
Um, I did while we were talking maintenance and knowing that our, you know, our collection, I always say it is, is aged like a fine wine. Um, of course our, our job as, as commissioners really is to make sure that we're taking care of things. Right. Um, so I'm going to share my screen, uh, just to remind everyone, can you see? Maintenance sign up, hopefully. Uh, this is yep. the link. Do you see it? It's okay. there. Yeah. So this is the sign up smart sheet um, for maintenance. And I will send this all to you again. We, usually in June is when we reallocate and, and, and shuffle the deck. If there's something that you signed up for previously and you want to keep an eye on it, keep watching it, uh, just sign up for it again. Ideally, if everyone signs up for five to seven, that covers the majority of the collection. And then whichever ones don't get selected, um, I will just uh, send a sheet and say, hey, you know, here's the list. Can somebody choose these ones? It's completely okay if more than one person signs up for the same work. And the reason, of course, is because of the nature of, of what we're looking at. It can be interpreted in different ways and people can see different things, right? Um, so more eyes is a good thing. So on this maintenance sign up, obviously you just pull the list down and you choose by a title. I will also send you the bad digital version of the bike map. It at least has the title and it has the number. So you can see on the map uh, what where the, the work is that you're that you're looking at. Um, and then a commissioner, first name, commissioner, last name and comments. And if you want me to send, if you want uh, it to send you um, a note uh, so you remember what you signed up for. Um, and then I'm just gonna try and flip my screen and see if this works. Did that work, Holly? Do you see it? It did, yeah. Artwork assessment, great. So this is the form. Um, and if you would like me to print it out for you, so you have one that you can just take on site with you, that's fine. It's also mobile friendly. And again, this is a, a, a qualitative, if you will, form, right? It's, it's your interpretation, but I need to know who you are and your email address is required on these things. The title of the artwork that you're looking at and the date, because of course, if somebody um, you know, takes a baseball bat to Statue of Liberty one day and then you go back and look at it another day, it's good to have the records in chronological order, right? Um, and then it's overall condition. Um, nothing is ever perfectly new, even when it's new, um, but this is just one, one gauge. Then additional issues, we fixed this, um, so you should be able to many. Uh, and then the surface coating, if, um, if you take a look at it and you see gum on it, then that has something on, you know, that looks like a surface coating. If you don't know, uh, then chances are it's probably not there. On the bronzes that were just waxed, I'm hoping that you can see a little bit of that, right? It's gonna look waxy. So you just do your best. Um, and then the condition of it. So if it was a bronze that just was waxed and now all of a sudden it's speckled, like it looks like oil and water and it's, um, or, or flaking of some sort on, on a piece of artwork, um, that would be the condition of your coating. And then hazards, is there a live wire? Is there a pool of water sitting at the base? Is there um, one of those mile markers along Macintosh that's like bent over sideways? Is it is it gonna hurt somebody? Um, and these are the ways that when I go through it and I filter these in an Excel spreadsheet, um, it gives me a quick glance to say, oh my goodness, like that actually is gonna hurt somebody and I need to do something about it right away. Um, and so you continue to go down damage. What does that look like? Is there an amount damage? Is the whole thing broken or is it just a little bit? Uh, is there a placard? We're still working on that one and its condition and then any comments. And if you can put the, your longitude and latitude in, um, that's only going to help us for the future as we go forward to make digital assets for people to find these, these works. Um, so it's, just, you know, date data collection. Uh, and lastly, uh, here is the artwork title location, just spreadsheet um, and the artist's name. So um, yeah, we'll just kind of get this process 
started again. Does anyone have questions or concerns based upon our last meeting where we really prioritized the pieces that are in, you know, not, not good shape? Um, and now going forward with some of these others, does anybody have any concerns that way? It's pretty easy, I'd say. Okay. Fantastic. So that, that's it on the maintenance front. Okay. How about your administrator's report? I should have written some things down, but I think the big stuff, of course, is um, enduring impressionism at the museum. If you have not gone to see that show, please hurry. <laughs> It closes tomorrow, um, and it, it's a it's a feather in the cap of Longmont. It really, really is. So, um, if you have an opportunity to do that, that would be great. Um, oh, boogers! I know what I forgot to do. The blue mile piece. Uh, forgive me. This is so. Anyways, that's alright. Um, that we had talked about to put into the library do you see that not really so it is now i will send this picture to you um it is in that stairwell and it's beautiful and the library staff is ecstatic they want to open up so badly and i i it was actually a really interesting installation because the uh construction workers wouldn't let me drive their lift and I was like, you guys aren't touching this painting. So I don't know how we're going to get this thing on the wall, but it worked out. And so uh, between uh, Sharice Montgomery, who's of course in charge of the Civic Center and myself and two absolutely lovely gentlemen with construction hats that I made them take off all their jewelry and their belts and like all their stuff and um, put on rubber gloves and they were really sweet about it. And they said that it was like the best thing that they did in a long time. So, um, and it was really hot that day. So they were just happy to be inside. Um, it <laughs> looks great. It looks really, it looks like it was meant to be there. So that's exciting. Um, and then the altar piece, which you'll recall, um, Susan and Noah had gone around pre pandemic well, actually beginning of pandemic to find a home for is going into the Longmont 150 show, which opens August something, 7th. Anyways, I'll, you'll get that invitation as well. Um, but it's great because then uh, the library staff can come over and see it. And then Noah, you and Susan and I will get back together, meet with Nancy, the director of the museum, and probably Carmen too to talk about its permanent home. So um, I think they're gonna be really excited once they see it. Um, we got mu moved to the museum. We moved it Tuesday. Yeah. So that's so, stuff. Real, real quick, Angela, the um, Enduring Impressions exhibition closes on the 18th. Oh. So we've got a little bit of time. And then the Longmont 150 opens on August the, 5th, the 7th. Oh, I was right about one. Okay. So you have three days to get down there to look at the impression. So I'm just totally amazed that a, a city the size of Longmont would have been able to bring in pieces of that stature. So Kim, I mean, it's, it's amazing to me. And I, I enjoyed seeing that show immensely. So thanks for doing that. Once in a lifetime experience, the yes. world world first viewing of a lot of these pieces. Yeah, totally amazing. Yeah. And we're so fortunate we live here and we could see it. So, yeah. So I think that that's the, the big stuff. Um, and I think that next time we get together and we have more of the uh, commission, we really need to look at our task forces and kind of shake that up a bit. Um, so the second piece is really, um, I think I'll send a list of whom was on, who, who, who was on 
different task forces, and then you can think about um, service and, and how we want to go forward. So, and that is all I have at 722. Okay. So it looks like our last section is commissioner's comments. If anybody has any other comments that they'd like to make, now's your chance. Any comments? I just want to take a, a second opportunity to welcome Iris. So we're super glad to have you. Yeah, I, I, and I can't, I literally can't wait till next month when we can actually all meet in person and have a more normal kind of a meeting. So I'm looking forward to that. Anybody else have something they'd like to say? Nope. Okay, so it looks like it's 723 and we'll be adjourning a little bit early this meeting and we'll see you at the next meeting on the 19th of August. So, and get out there and sign up for some of those Saturday afternoon shifts. All right. Thanks everybody. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.